Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in to SAS Art today. My name is Savannah, and today we're going to be doing a black and white acrylic painting that is abstract, and it's gonna include mountains and sky in there with some sun rays and clouds as well. And before we get started, I'm going to show a quick sketch of what I did before I filmed this. This footage was originally filmed for Stetler Local TV, and that segment I did live on a web broadcast. So this is some of the footage that I filmed on my side of things. To see the full footage, you can go to stetlerlocal.com slash TV to see more. I will post a quick picture of a list of the supplies that you're gonna need. And if you guys want to pause that, you can do that. Or else if you'd like, I will also have it in the description below. I've also included a quick time lapse at the end of this segment to give you guys a quick overall look of the start to finish product that was created. So decide where you want your mountains on the page. And I think that I'm gonna put mine right about there. So almost at a 45 degree angle there and go up a little bit and make a little bit of a point and then do a little bit of a loop down and back a little bit more and we'll probably put in at least two or three mountains in this one you can have as many mountains as you like or as few right now we're just putting on the outline so I'll do another one that kind of goes off the page a little bit now I'm going to create some of the peaks and shadows and I'll kind of follow where that peak goes and bring it down and allow it to kind of swoop off the page. So with this piece, we're gonna be doing a little bit more abstract and black and white I found shows up on our camera pretty good. So that's what I've decided to go with today. And we'll do the same over on this side. And these lines don't have to be completely blacked in. It's okay if there's spots in it or if it's a little bit, little bit warped looking. There's no real right or wrong when it comes to the painting aspect. It's all about learning what to do with your brushes and just having some fun with it. And I might actually put one more line connecting in between our two peaks here down. So once you've got your basic mountains in, the next step that I am going to do is put in our sun. Now with our sun, you can use a plastic container or if you have something that you can copy to make a circle if you need, easy enough to place it wherever and trace it on. If you need that step beforehand, you can always do it with pencil first and sketch out where you want your mountains, where you want your sun to be, any clouds that we're going to add in. So I think I'm going to put my sun right in about there. So wherever you'd like to put your sun, I'm going to do a big circle. And I think I'm also going to add sun rays to it. But before I do that, I'll probably add some clouds just to give an idea of where I'm going to place them before I put anything else in. So for myself, I like the look of the wispy clouds. So I'm going to start in a spot and use the finer edge of my brush and wisp in some of those clouds. And I'm not too worried if it doesn't look the greatest right now because we're going to be adding more detail in. So there's one of my clouds. And I might add one more in just at the top. So now that I've got the bigger details in, I'm going to go back with a smaller liner brush and we're going to do some of the finer detail. So with the rays, I usually start at least in the middle of your sun and do a line that's smaller at the bottom and goes out larger as you go up. 
And if you need to measure, a good way to do it, if you're not sure where it's going to be or if it's going to be even, think about it like a plus sign or a X. And you can base your sun and where it starts from there. So again, same thing over here. And go out. And I'm going to do one more right up here. And it's okay if your rays are different sizes. You can make a different size sun if you want. If you want it bigger, smaller, if you don't want a sun in there at all, it's really up to you. This is just the basic idea. So now what I'm going to do is before we go on to adding any abstract lines or extra detail in there, we're going to actually shadow in some of your mountain details and some of your sun and rays. So for that, I just take a little bit of water and we almost water our acrylic paint down like watercolor paint. And I just dip my paintbrush into some water, get any extra excess black off. And if you're not too sure how black your paint is once you've done this, you can always check on a piece of paper. So in this case, looks like it's a lighter gray color. So that's not too bad, as long as it's a little bit of a different gradient than your solid black color. And I might actually use my wider brush to do this. So if you're starting with a dry brush, wet it first, and then just get a little bit of that black onto it as well. And what we're gonna wanna do is shade in one side of your mountains. And if you're doing it from the perspective side of it, then you're going to want to do it wherever the sun is not. So the sun's on this side, your shadow's going to end up being on that side. And light will hit the sides that the sun rays are going on. And if your brush is a little bit wet, just be careful because you may have some paint go off your page, but you'll know if you've got enough water because it'll spread either nicely or it'll start to run a little bit. And I'm going to do the same on this mountain too. Just giving it a bit of a gradient and a different look to it. And I'm going to do the same with the rays. And using the same paintbrush, I'm not cleaning it, we're just going to darken those in a little bit. And it's okay if it's a little bit different tone, we're not done yet. We are still going to be adding in our lines and different kinds of elements to make this more interesting. So once you've got your rays in, I'm going to also do a little bit of the sun and I'm just going to go right around that line. And I don't think I'm going to do the whole thing, I'm just going to bring it down until it runs out of water and paint. And that gives it a nice kind of shadow effect. And another detail that I sometimes do is I will also do just a little bit of shadowing on this side of the mountain. And I'm just going to use the brush and using the flat side of it, just pull down and just do a little bit down the side of the mountain. And you'll be able to see brush strokes from doing it like that. And same on this one as well. So now that you've got your shadowing and your detail in, now what we're going to focus on is some of the lines and abstract elements to our mountains. And I'm going to use my little liner brush again and load it with the paint. And you can choose lines or squiggles, polka dots, whatever you'd like. But I like to do kind of a patterned look to it. So for my mountains, I think I'm going to actually do lines that follow that peak. And I'm going to do them all the way along and down the mountain. And if you have your paint pen, this can be more accurate. You know, if you want to spend a lot of time and make it really look like it all is exact. 
by all means, take that time and you definitely make it your own. So I'm going to do that again here. And what we're going to do is do that all the way down. And as I go down the page, I'm going to keep it smaller on one side and allow it to widen. So the space gap is going to get a little bit bigger as I go down. This just lets the mountains look like there's a little bit more texture and different look to them. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask and I'll answer the best that I can. And if you see this video afterwards, please comment on the video or if you see it on their Stetler Local YouTube channel, that's all one word, Stetler Local, then you can also comment on there and I'll try and keep an eye and if anyone has questions or if you want to see something else done or if you have a art project that you're just not sure where to start or you're stuck on, I would love to answer your questions. And yeah, if you guys make any art or follow along to this, please share your work and I will, I will try and keep up with it and I'll share it to my page and let everyone else see what the viewers can do. So for right now, I think I'm going to leave it at that and we're going to do the same thing over on this mountain, but I think I'm going to change the angle and we're going to do a little bit more straighter lines. And again, as you go down, getting a little bit wider. And within these lines, you could do more detail. It's a good way for you to get out of a rut. If you're not, if you're not sure what you want to draw or do, this is a good way to just try different kinds of techniques and art pieces and just getting your mind going a little bit when it comes to creating a new piece of art. So I might actually go and put some little dots in some of these mountains and I will skip one line every time. And I'm not being very accurate here. It's all about the final look of it. So in my clouds and my sun rays, I am actually going to do a little bit of line work. So I'm going to do one line that goes about halfway up our sun ray and then another littler line on each side. Gives the eye something to look at when they look at your piece of work. And same on this one. So I'll bring it closer for you guys to look at. On the other side of my mountains, I think I may make it a little bit more interesting and you can do this with a wooden skewer or if you've got a toothbrush or there's all kinds of things that you can use to do dot work but for me I'm going to start in the bottom of my mountain and I'm not worrying about how big the dots are or how small I'm still using my liner brush and I am just going to go a little ways up the mountain Especially when you're creating something abstract like this, there's no, no right or wrong. It's definitely all about making it your own and yeah, seeing what other people think of it and creating things that you enjoy making. So even if you're not happy with it at the moment, if you add some color later or you add other elements to it, there's always ways to change it. And I'm going to do the same on this mountain as well. So I chose black just because it shows up really good on camera, but if you wanted to do your mountains and sky and blues or pinks or reds, there's so many options. And you can even do this with marker or if you have watercolor, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So if you have details that you want to add in after you paint your main part of your painting and you have a permanent marker or you have a acrylic paint pen, whatever you'd like. There are so many different ways to add in your different elements. 
And on this side, I think I might do some triangle patterns across some of these. And the more that you add to it, the more of an abstract look it's going to get. And with this one, I'm going to do it on all the lines. What you'd like to add to it, you can add embellishments to your, to your sun, do little swoops wherever you'd like. It's really all about just testing out different kinds of artworks. And at the end, you may have something that you want to put up somewhere, or maybe you want to sell it or give it to a friend, or if it wasn't Mother's Day yesterday, you could give your mom a piece that you make or for her birthday, Christmas present. There's so many ways to give out your art after the fact. So I'm gonna also do those clouds a little bit darker and just dipping my paintbrush in the water and then a little bit of black paint again. And I'm just gonna pull it right across those clouds. So there's the basic concept for that. The very last thing, don't forget to put your name on your artwork. I'm gonna wait until this is dry and then I'll be putting that on it but make sure you put it somewhere where people will be able to find it. So in this case, I may put it along the ridge or up on this part. Somewhere that people, if they see it and they like it, they're going to go, I want to know who that is, and they can find you. Thanks everyone for watching, and if you liked what you've seen and you followed along, please make sure to share whatever you've created. And if you want to see more of my content and follow along to other projects, please subscribe and like SAS Art for more.